Hi boys and welcome to another RBHSP with Mr Dalton production here. Today we're looking at force summation and in particular how we generate large amounts of force in sporting contexts. Let's start with the definition. Rabel conserves this momentum through his hips and torso, rotating his shoulders over 1,300 degrees per second, faster than NHL All-Star Alex Ovechkin. Here we have a visual representation of this concept of force summation. On the far left where it says too early, you can see that the movement has been passed from one body part to the next too quickly, and therefore maximum force production has not been achieved. On the far right, it's the opposite where the movement's been passed from one body part to the next too late. Uh, and again, you can see there that maximum force production has not been achieved. Whereas in the middle, we've got a well-timed movement where the body has passed the movement onto its next body part in a ideal timing, uh, and therefore maximum force is produced. Okay, what we're going to do now is have a look at LeBron James taking on Rory McIlroy in the golf swing. What I want you to do is compare how LeBron James fails to generate much force, and, and it comes down to a lot of factors, but predominantly his lack of recruitment of muscles and sequential timing of the movement, which results in a pretty ugly swing, which I'm sure you'll agree. Compare that to Rory McIlroy and how, how much of his body he recruits, uh, how much force he generates into producing such a smooth and powerful golf swing. Trying something new, that's what it's about. Ready? Yeah. It didn't look good, man. What I hear you talk about you trying new things is definitely, it's refreshing. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you. When I play this back, you're not gonna like it. What do you think if you're not good at? Oh. Uh, Technically, that was really bad. You're not bending your knees at all. Yeah. You locked up like a two by four. Relax. Do I play basketball? No. But if you wanted to invite me, don't bend your knees, but let them loose a little bit. Wiggle, but not really too much. Back straight, but not really. Ain't you got somewhere else to go? No, I'm here all day. I would do it because that's me trying new things. Hello? What up, homie? I'm trying to relax. Kev won't leave me alone. Hello? Come on. And splash. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Why are you laughing? This ain't just sport, man. This is golf. But it's fine. We're trying something new. Yeah. Let me get that. Try it again. Let's try it one more time. Look at that setup. Look at how braced that right leg is. Look at the right knee and right thigh and the extension here. And watch the coil on that shirt right now and how far back that club. And look at that right knee and right thigh still absorbing all that, that power that's built in now. And then look at the sort of squat turn and that turns the hip out. Delay the hand action. Whack right there at the bottom. Extension right there. Full follow through right up against the nape of the neck. Watch this. Just like an Adonis follow through. Look at that. That is too good to talk about. Okay, so what you've learned so far, this concept of force summation suggests that the body is interconnected and must work together to produce movement. Sequential timing of the muscles is vitally important. This interconnection of the body and, and muscles is also known as a kinetic chain. As we can see in these pictures here with LeBron James and Rory McIlroy, there is a process of acceleration through the movement and then deceleration at the end. Deceleration is key, it's a follow through and it's when your body slows back down and dissipates the kinetic energy that's not delivered into the ball. Now what is critically important and what Rory does so much better than LeBron James is he accelerates through the ball and decelerates through a powerful follow through whereas LeBron James is decelerating early through the movement and thus not producing a powerful as much. This concept of acceleration and deceleration we'll look at further when we get to Newton's laws, in particular Newton's second law, the law of acceleration.
11. Green's last shot of the half. He nailed it. Danny Green continues to fill it up. Miller fires away. Oh! Andre Miller. No, you didn't. LeBron brings it back from half court. Got it! Off the glass and in! From not only downtown, how about from Akron? <laughs> that was a long way out. And that counts! Tyreek Evans packing it in from just inside half court. An emphatic close to a strong quarter for this young, athletic Sacramento Kings team. Turns it over, Jennings will pick it up. And he fires it from midcourt, hit it, does it count? Could that be a spark from midcourt? A heave by the young buck and bango, I think it counts. Now with just a couple of seconds left, Rudy Gay oh. scores it. Rudy Gay from beyond midcourt banks it in. Paul George has the rebound. Two seconds to play from half court. George <laughs> hits the three! <laughs> he drilled it. <laughs> oh my goodness, he drilled it. Harris dribbled it off his knee. He's going to have to launch one from near midcourt. He does. Oh, he packed it in! Oh my goodness! Danny Harris from about 40 feet away. From the near sideline, banks it in. Byron Scott puts his hand to his head as if to say, oh my goodness. Three seconds, plenty of time here. Marvin from midcourt. Ball oh! down! How about that? Three nets. Watch this. One, two, three red shirts from midcourt. Bottom of the sack. Wow. <laughs> nice. Final seconds of the third, and here's Wade. Got it! A third three of the quarter, and that one in spectacular fashion by Dwayne Wade.